happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning. If you are happy and you know it, and you really want to show it, let me hear you give a hallelujah shout. You sound like you're, you're warming up. Let me hear you give the Lord a hallelujah shout. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, our God, our Savior, we thank you, Lord, for this another opportunity to be in your presence. Lord, our days are numbered, but, and we don't know when, Lord, we will take our last breath, but we are so grateful, Lord, that we can be in your presence this morning to lift up your great and holy name. God, we welcome your holy spirit in this service god it is your service we do it all for you and we pray mighty god that you will touch every heart every mind every body every spirit god those who are viewing online and for us here in your sanctuary god we thank you that you have made a way that we can live abundant lives that we can walk in freedom that we can walk away from the shackles and the snares of sin. Take control, we pray and ask. Bind up every plan of the enemy. Lead and direct, we pray. In Jesus' name. Bless the Lord. Our theme for this morning is this might be your last chance. Amen? And if this might be your last chance, it means we have to give God our very best. Amen? One more time. One more time. One more time. One more time. Oh, I'm glad to be in God's service. One more time. 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 Oh, I'm glad to bring our service. One more time. Another angel 
fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, to every nation and every kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of judgment is come. And worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. Amen. So we got to praise him. I will praise you, Lord. With every breath that I take, I will praise you, Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise God. We are going to continue as we sing number 93 from the hymnal, The Comforter Has Come. Spread the tidings round Wherever man is found Wherever human hearts And human woes abound let every Christian tongue proclaim the joyful sound that comes as come the comforter as come the comforter
in a strings of endless love. That song that ne'er will die, that God further has come. That God This time we're going to approach the throne of grace. I'm going to ask Sister Patricia to come. Sweet, oh sweet, anointing, oh
God. We magnify your name. We honor you, O God. There is none like you, and there is no other God besides you, Almighty God. We glorify your name, O God. We honor you, O God. You are able, Almighty God, to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we could ever ask or think. You are our holy help this morning, Lord. You are our strength this morning, Lord. Oh God, we magnify your name. We glorify your name, oh God. Comfort to our hearts, comfort to our souls. Almighty God, you are worthy to be lifted up. You are worthy to be magnified. When all else fail, you are there. When all else fail, we can lean on you. When all else fail, you are in our corner, Jesus. Oh God, you are worthy. Oh God, you are worthy. Almighty God, I pray the prayer request before you. Oh God, I pray Sister Griffith before you, oh God. Let your healing virtue come upon her, Almighty God. Let your healing virtue, oh God. Heavenly Father, you have done it already. And you will do it again. Oh God, if we just believe that you are all a miracle working God. Oh God, you are worthy. Oh God, you are awesome in all your ways. Oh Lord Jesus, oh God, help us to stay on the fiery line. No matter what happened in our lives, help us to choose you, Lord. Help us to choose you, Jesus. Oh God, I place the children of this world before you. Oh God, cover their little souls. Oh mighty God, you have been abused, you have been hurt. Oh mighty God, cover them from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence and from the devil, Lord. Have thy own way, King Jesus. Have thy own way, your blessed Savior. Oh God, Heavenly Father, I place our leaders before you. I place Bishop Rankin before you. Oh God, a man of valor. Oh God, a man after your own heart. Lord Jesus, oh God, touch him from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. Preserve his life, oh God. Heavenly Father, we thank you for him. We thank you for the word that he has passed on to us that has made us firm and grounded in you, Lord. We thank you for this man of God this morning. We thank you for this man of God this morning, Lord. Oh God, we place reverend before you. Oh God, we thank you for these leaders. Lord Jesus, help us to pay close to you. Help us to stay under your blood. Oh God, only you can save us. Only you can protect us. Only you can keep us. Lord Jesus, oh God, I place the service in your hands. I place everything that is said and done in your hands, Lord. Oh God, we bless your holy name. We magnify your name. We honor your name. Help us to walk in the spirit daily, almighty God. Help us to choose you. Help us to live for you. Oh God, no matter what the circumstances, good or bad, help us to choose you, Lord. Of thy known way, King Jesus. Of thy known way, O blessed Savior. Of thy known way, O wonderful counter, all our unsafe friends. In our midst, oh God, touch them, cover them, never leave nor forsake them. Oh God, hearken unto their hearts, cry, Lord. Of thy known way, King Jesus. Of thy known way, O blessed Savior. Of thy known way, O wonderful counselor. Holy Spirit, take control. Holy Spirit, take control. Oh God, let self be slain. Minister to us, oh God. Of thy own way, oh blessed Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Church, just wave your hands to the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. We bless your great and holy name, wonderful Lord. Hallelujah. Bless God. We invite Sister Denise Thomas to come with the reading of the word. Bless the Lord, everyone. The scripture reading is taken from Revelations chapter 14, and we're going to read from verse 1 to 7, 
we'll read it together and i looked and lo a lamb stood on the mount zion and with him an hundred and forty and four thousand having his father's name written in their foreheads and i heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters and as the voice of a great thunder and i heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps and they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders and no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty and four thousand which were redeemed from the earth these are they which were not defiled with women for they are virgins these are they which follow the lamb with so wherever he goeth these were redeemed from among men being the first fruits unto god and to the lamb and in their mouth was found no guile for they are without fault before the throne of god and i saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people saying with a loud voice fear god and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters here endeth a portion of the reading of god's holy word so you may be seated sister denise will come with the greetings shall we praise the lord everyone shall we praise the lord everyone praise god it is indeed an honor to be in the presence of the lord praise god every time we get a chance to praise him people of god we have to utilize that opportunity just last week i came and i requested prayer for my uncle who was in the hospital monday gone was the last day that he was in the land of the living so every time we get a chance we have to give thanks praise god this morning i like to greet the presence of the lord in our midst i like to greet our bishop and our reverend praise god we're always happy to have them with us Amen. our deacons the musicians the saints um, those viewing online we trust that you are enjoying the service and we trust that you will continue to support our ministry and as soon as it's possible that you will visit with us in person to fellowship in the lord praise god at this time i'll also like to extend greetings to our visitors is there any visitor in our midst with a first time second time could you kindly stand praise the lord praise god praise god we're happy to have you and we trust that you will enjoy the service and that you will come again praise god i'm glad to be in god's service i'm glad to be in god's service i'm glad to be in god's service one more
with us. We give God thanks today for his strength and his goodness, his mercy towards us. We're so delighted to be among God's people today. And of course, I'm so happy to know that I'm still with you. Amen. I'm so thankful that God has spared our life, myself and my partner here. God is good to us. Amen. And I, I view the service that was aired two weeks ago and it was so thrilling to me. Amen. To hear preach again like you know those old time days. Praise God. And to all the saints, the Lord bless you. To our missions director and the team. Today's mission service. And you know, this is the um, only five more months leave for the year to finish. Amen. And it has come so fast. Amen. Amen. First of August today. And in just a little while from now, the year will pass away. So let us do our best. Amen. To whatever we can do for the Lord, we do it. We would like to greet all our visiting friends and trust today that the way you came, you leave in a different way. Somebody say amen. amen. To all those that are in media land, we discover that a lot of people are listening and viewing and whatever we are doing here. Some persons all abroad claim that this is their church for the listen out for it each day. So let us try to support it as best as we can. Amen. Let us try to do our best. When we come to church, let us pour out ourselves unto the Lord so that he can bless us individually and collectively. God bless you today as we continue to worship and adore him. Amen. Let's say God bless our bishop. Hallelujah. At this time, I'm going to invite our pastor, Reverend Dorothy Rankin, to come with her greetings and announcements. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. We give God thanks for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. With my husband, uh, the hosting committee, and for all the saints and the children and our visitors in the name of the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are very glad to have you. I have so many of you out today. Now, our announcements are as follows. This month is, who knows what it is in the church. What? Three days prayer and fasting. It will be August 17th through 19th. And this will be a time, if you notice, those of you that have the hotlines, it's a time when we will be in much prayer. Amen? Praise the Lord. All right. So we just have to listen out for the other reports. And we trust that the Lord will work everything so that everything will work out just fine. Praise the Lord. Okay. We'd like to say welcome back to brother and sister Williams, who is here with their little young boy. And the baby will be dedicated today. Praise the Lord. We're glad to see Brother Walden back also. Praise the Lord. All right. Now, now, I would like to leave some report from the missions field. And the Cisco family is on furlough and they have some prayer requests which we're going to leave with you and before we leave we're going to pray 
for these requests that they have mentioned. Number one, they say prayer against COVID. South Africa is the 15th most effective, affected country in the world. We have lost precious pastors and saints. Pray for God's direction as we settle into a new country in the upcoming months. They are leaving that area to a new country. Pray for our children, their children, young children, and their, um, when I say young, I mean in their teens, and they're just leaving high school to go back to the States to go to university. And you know that can be devastating when you're in one country and your children is in another and you can't even see them when they come home in the evenings to encourage them and to strengthen them. So when these missionaries give their lives for the gospel's sake, we should pray them up and pray the things that concern them because your mind cannot be divided when you're doing ministerial work. You, you have to be focused. So pray for their children that they might continue being Christians and they don't have to weep and sorrow for them. Amen? Then they say pray for revival in the entire south central suburb sub-region. And they say pray for the Lord Pray that the Lord will send forth laborers into the harvest. This is a time when we need laborers. When we need people who will have the passion. And so we are going to stand today and we are going to pray against COVID. We are going to bind it in the name of Jesus. If this is not the will of God... We're going to put it to God and say, God, if this is your will, then let your will be done. But if it's not your will, bind it and cast it out into the sea. And stay in the sea. Praise the Lord. Then we're going to pray for the Cisco's children. And we're going to pray that God will send laborers. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Now... The scripture was written about Israel who had 144,000 but the scripture goes on to say a great number which no man could number after this. So we are a part of that great number. We are not Jews. We are the church. And we want other people to come into the church. Amen? So we're going to pray for a mighty move of God. We are going to pray for against COVID and we are going to pray for the Cisco's children who are missionaries who have given their lives to the work of the kingdom so that others might be saved. Let us stand. We'll pray together. Everybody pray. Lord Jesus. We love you, Lord. You are great and greatly to be praised. We thank you, Lord, for all that you are doing in the earth today. Lord Jesus, we bring the world before you. God, we know that many times when men will not hear, you cause things to happen to cause them to turn to you. God, if this is your will, then let your will be done. But God, if it is not your will, we bind it and cancel it. Ah, the covert Lord, and cast it out. Hallelujah, that your people might have strength and the freedom to worship you and to seek your face. Let your will be done. Ah, Koshente, Messiah. Let your will be done. Let your will be done. Look down upon your people, oh God, and open the door so that we might be able to worship you. God, bind everything that is contrary. Bind everything that fights against your people. Bind situations and circumstances that are contrary to your kingdom. Oh God, take full control. Look down at those who are suffering, those who are sick, ministers who are sick. 
Shantale de la Masaya, Eke Yolo Mosato, touch and heal, we pray. Drive back everything that is contrary. God, we pray for the Cisco's children. Cover them with your blood as they go into university. God, that their parents can have a free mind. Oh God, to do your work. Hallelujah, to labor in your vineyard. Oh God, have your own way. Send us a mighty move. God, you know what to do and when to do what. Remove every ignorance, Jesus. Oh, give us a mighty move. Save the lost. Have your own way in our lives, we pray. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord, everybody. After we have gone through a certain part of the service, then we are going to call the Williams family to do baby dedication so we can't do it in the usual way but we will do it the way as best as we can uh, we're going to ask when we are ready for that time we're going to ask these two children to take a seat behind there because they ask us to do it free from people around amen so when that time comes we're going to ask you to sit back there God bless you, in Jesus. Sorry. Let's praise the Lord, everybody. At this time, I'm going to ask the ushers to come forward. This is another opportunity for us to worship the Lord. We worship Him in giving. Amen. And if this is your last chance, we don't know, let us give the Lord something that is good. Amen. Bless God. I'm going to ask Brother Walden to bless our tithes and offering. I give you thanks, O oh God, for another opportunity, O oh God, that we can give. I pray for your anointing, your blessing upon this offering, Father, O oh God. I pray, O oh God, that you continue to bless those who have to give and those who don't. Lord, I pray, O oh God, that you open the door and make a way for them to have. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <laughs> A grateful heart. Each time I think of you, the praises start. I love you so much, Jesus. I love you so.
I'm going to invite Sister Patricia Murray, our teacher for this morning, as she takes us through the children's segment. God bless you, children, as you listen closely. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord, boys and girls. Praise the Lord, boys and girls. Bless God, bless God. So our topic for the children's segment is Choose Jesus. What is our topic? What is our topic? Choose Jesus. Right, so now we'll be reading two portions of scriptures. We'll be reading one at the beginning of the lesson and one at the end. So keep your Bibles handy. So our first scripture is Job chapter 1 verse 1 to 5. There was a man in the land of Oz whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and eschewed evil. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance also was seven thousand sheep and three thousand camels and five hundred yoke of oxen and five hundred she asses and a very great household so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the east and his sons went and feasted in their houses everyone is day and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them and it was so when the days of their feasting were gone about that Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offering according to number of them all. For Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts, just did Job continually. Now as we heard, there was this man of the land of us whose name was Job. And he had ten children seven sons and how many daughters how many daughters right and job had wealth he had asses oxen and sheep and he was considered to be the wealthiest the greatest man of the east but job children they will call feast and but right after the feast job will sentence consecrate them because guess what job cared for them spiritually job ensured that he prayed them up right because you don't want to, them to sin in their hearts and curse god so parents pray for your children teach your children how to pray teach them how to read the bible because we are living in the days where our children are being abused our children are dying and you can't help them only jesus can help them only jesus can help them encourage them to serve the lord they are not too young to die. They are not too young to die. So encourage them to serve the Lord. Right? Now, in the same breath of time, the sons of God went up to present themselves before the Lord. And guess who showed up? Guess who showed up? Walking around in the hurt. And the Lord said, Have you seen my servant Job, a perfect and upright man? One that feared God and eschewed evil, meaning he stayed away from evil. And Satan said, Job, do it not serve you for naught. You have blessed him. You have placed an edge around him. Remove that edge. Touch all that he had. And say if he wouldn't curse you to thy face. But the Lord knew Job. We should live a life where the Lord can talk about us, can be confident about us. Right? So Job walked upright and the Lord could boast about Job. But so the Lord allowed Satan to touch Job wealth, his substance. And then Job messengers came unto him and said, Your sheep, your asses, all your wealth have been devoured and consumed. And not just that. Right after another messenger came and said, Your children have died. All ten children have died. But you know what stands out most about Job? He did not curse the Lord. He did not say, Why me, Lord? Like most of us will do. But Job said, Naked came I from my mother's womb, and naked I shall return. 
the Lord gave and the Lord take it away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So Job gave thanks even in his distress. So in everything we should give. In everything we should give. Right. And Satan realized that, okay, Job is not cursing God. So he said, all that a man will give, give up but for his life, he will want to save his life. So let me touch him flesh. And the Lord allowed Satan to touch Job. And Job had boils, sore boils from head to toe. Sore boils and they must have been itching him. He must have been uncomfortable. And the person that Job would look to to comfort him, which would be his wife. And you know what she said unto him? You still owe, you still owe your integrity? Curse God and die. So you see when all else fail, and when no one else is there, Jesus is there. So in everything you do, choose Jesus. In everything you do, choose Jesus. But Job is sticky true. And Job had some negative friends. They, they, they will say, Job, you have, maybe you have sinned before the Lord. You know, you have some persons, as everything starts going bad in their life, they want to tell you how much sin you have seen and everything. But no, Job, they come and they come with their negativity. So we should away with this world, away with the devil, and we should choose Jesus. Just like Job, away with his friends, his negative friends, and away with his wife, with his wife that told him to curse God and die. But he's sticky true with Jesus. He's sticky true with Jesus. So when you're sticky true with Jesus, don't worry about what you have lost. Don't worry about your trials, your testing. Because the Lord will give you double for your trouble. The Lord will give you double for your trouble. Just hold on to Jesus. So as I said, we were, we were going to read two portions of scriptures. Turn with me to Job 42. Job 42. And we'll see how in the latter days of Job, how the Lord blessed him bountifully. I want everyone to read me now Job 42 verse 12 to 15. So that, and we are comparing the beginning to the end of Job life because he chose Jesus. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning for he had 14,000 sheep. Who remember how much, how much he had in the beginning? Seven. 14,000 sheep and 6,000 camels. How much he had before? And a thousand yoke of oxen. How much he had before? And a thousand she asses. How much he had before? And he had also his seven sons and three daughters. And he called the name of the first Jemima and the name of the second Kezia and the name of the third Karen Apuk. And in all the land were no women found so fair as the daughters of Job. And their father gave them inheritance among their brethren. So in the end, the Lord blessed Job with double the amount that he had. And his daughters were fairer than all the women in the land. So in all you do, choose Jesus. God bless you. So at this time, our Sunday school children will be coming with an item. Walking walk with, with Jesus, walking every day, walking all the way. Walking with Jesus, walking with Jesus today.
come at this time with the missions update and we'll follow with the baby dedication bless the lord church it is my pleasure this morning to bring you an update from the missions field we know amidst the covid 19 situation you know we still have missionaries that are going out there and we just want to continue to pray for them because guess what church great things are still happening Amen. bless god so reporting from the philippines there were seven people were miraculously healed in one service bless god and three was baptized and during the service one was filled with the holy ghost bless god reporting from the solomon islands there were 15 young people that were baptized in jesus name bless god reporting from cuba pastor michael kalunga he baptized five souls in the mighty name of jesus christ reporting from nicaragua they had an harvest feast and you know they reported that it they had a lot of challenge but guess what 33 souls were baptized bless god bless god reporting from chile on the 25th of july that was a sunday they made their first baptism celebration where they baptized two persons and later down in the service one of them got filled with the holy spirit bless god bless god walking with jesus today hallelujah i'm going to invite the parents brother and sister williams with their children the newest baby on the block bless god as we welcome our pastor to do the baby dedication stop there for the time being reverend is going to come and read from the word of god praise the lord everybody now we do not sprinkle babies because the bible did not say so we are going to do it how the bible says it and we're going to turn to St. Mark chapter 10. Ready? From verse 13. And they brought young children unto him that he should touch them. And his disciples rebuked those that brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased. And he said unto them, Suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as, little, as a little child, he shall not enter therein. And he took them up in his arms, and, and put his hand upon them, and bless them so the Lord took them he put his hand on them 
didn't say sprinkle water on them. Amen. He put his hand on them and he blessed them. Now COVID is telling us that we can't do it as was. But we're not going to use any water. We're going to lay our hands on them and on the child. The baby's name is Ayana Danelia Williams. And so we're going to pray for her today. And we are not going to... We want this baby to stay whole, less, We are living in a terrible world and everything is speaking negative for the little ones but we are praying to the Lord to protect this child body, soul and spirit praise the Lord so we don't even want a left hand. It's a right hand reward. This is thick. This is kind of tight for me. I'm just going to use the hand sanitizer. Oh. They said the parents must hold the child while we bless them. Lord Jesus, we come to you today on behalf of this child. Lord God, you know the future of this child because you are the one who brought this people together. Hallelujah, brother and sister Williams. Lord, and given them this child. And I know that every child that you bring into the world, you have a purpose for that life. We ask you, Lord, to lay your hands on this child right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Let your presence be upon her. Let your blood be upon her. Keep her under your wings. Keep her in the center of your will. Lead and direct her life as she grows. Oh God, protect her from harm and danger. Protect her from sickness. Protect her from the end of the enemy. Let your blood be upon her life. Oh God, keep her back from intruders. Hey, touch her and keep her. And guide her until you receive her. Help the parents, Lord, to be prayerful. Because the child will be just what they are. Help them to pray. Help them to read the word. Help them to cause this child to see them. Praying and studying your word. So that she will adopt that principle. And be like that. Hallelujah. Have your own way in their lives. Hallelujah. Draw them together closely. And help them, Lord, to be deep in thee. So the child will be an offspring, an offshoot of their life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Okay, we're going to ask them to go back to their seat. The certificate will be ready. And when it's ready, we will call them. It is worship time, and this might be your last chance. So you got to give the Lord the very best that you have. Amen. Sister Camille is coming again. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. As Sister Jackson says, this might be your last chance. 
But you know, there's a song that says, While the blood runneth warm in your vein, seek salvation. Bless God. While the blood runneth warm in your vein. While the blood runneth warm in your vein.
Shouts of praise this morning. Yes, God. No shouts of praise this morning. It could be a last chance. Yes, God.
could happen to any one of us is Jesus. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. How many times have you heard someone say
Bless the Lord. Shall we bless the Lord? Hallelujah. You know, every time that I feel the presence of God, I'm reminded that there is truly no other feeling like this. 
Hallelujah. 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 There's something about the touch of God that just feels different. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's something about when, you know, when someone else touches you. You know, you are aware, but when you feel a touch from God, it's like you are in a different place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we just embrace Him? Hallelujah. 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 What a awesome feeling. Hallelujah. 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 Shall we bless the Lord? Hallelujah. 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 Can we just worship Him some more? Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 Jesus, I thank you, hallelujah, hallelujah, kindly turn your Bibles with me to the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 13. We'll be reading from verse 1 to verse 9. Hallelujah. We'll be reading together. They were present at that season. Some that told him of the Galileans, whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And Jesus answering said unto them, Suppose he... Because they suffered such things, I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, ye shall likewise perish. Are those eighteen and slew them, think ye that they were sinners above all men, that dwell in Jerusalem, I tell you, nay, but except you repent, ye shall all likewise perish. He spake also this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and sought fruit thereon, and found none. Then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree, and cut it down. Why cumber it, it and gro the ground? And he answering said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also, till I shall dig about it and dug it. And if it bear fruit, well, and if not, then cut it down. I'll ask Reverend to pray. Lord Jesus, we love you. We thank you, Lord, for one more time being into your house. We thank you for your people, oh God. We thank you for the preacher. We thank you for all those who have ministered to the glory of your name. And now, Lord, it's time for your word. And we ask you to unctionize the lips of clay. Use him, Lord. Speak through him, make him your lively oracle. Lord, let the word come with power and anointing. Let souls, O oh God, be sanctified. O oh God, let your people be edified. God, let the sinners be convicted. O oh God, and be saved. And let the enemy be terrified. Let your glory come down in Jesus' name. We give you the praise and the glory and the honor. Hallelujah. For the power and the glory is thine. Thank you, Lord, in your precious name. Bless the Lord. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. You know, I want to take the time out to greet each and every one of you in the matchless name of Jesus. I want to greet our bishop and our reverend, our wonderful saints and our visitors. Shall we bless the Lord? You know, I was just reminded this week that Time is really flying, you know, tomorrow my daughter will be six years old. I can't believe that six years has gone by already. And this also tells us that whatever we are doing, we need to make haste. Amen. 
because time is not waiting on us you know also during the week when i was praying and i was asking god for a message you know and it was revealed to me that this might be your last chance you know i was very excited because this theme sounds very powerful amen this might be your last chance and you know i was there and i was asking god for a, a power message you know because for a word so powerful i was truly expecting something that would have been come that would go forth with much power amen and i was there tussling and i was not getting that power message amen but nonetheless i believe god sometimes speaks to us softly he doesn't always take the same route we serve a god who is he is a sheep amen that is that that was slaughtered for us amen he is our lion of the tribe of judea we serve a god who holds many different offices shall we bless the lord and he cannot be confined neither will he be confined by the imaginations of our mind we serve a god who does things outside of the ordinary hallelujah we serve a god who, who shows up one thing we are certain of is that he will show up we don't always know how he will show up but he will show up shall we bless the lord hallelujah and so it was revealed to me that planning is very important you know whatever genre of life whatever aspect of life we find ourselves in you know it's important that we plan amen you know if i should ask a teacher and if i am wrong you can correct me you know if before you deliver a lesson you know it is required of you to prepare a lesson plan amen that lesson plan must have certain things in it it must outline your objectives your aim what you expect the students to learn at the end of the lesson your, amen you expect the results before a doctor does a surgery then he must surprise himself with the fundamental principles he must have a plan and he must have expectations i can tell you that before a soldier goes on a mission he must first gather all the necessary information he must plan and outline his expected results this is a universal principle a universal language some would call it whatever we do we must plan and we must have expectations amen, amen? and you find also that we as human beings we were not just placed here on earth without a plan amen we were placed here with a purpose and we were placed here because he who placed us here he expects something of us amen shall we bless the lord hallelujah 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 god expects something of us shall we bless the lord and to bring across this point i would love to use the parable as told by jesus in saint luke 13 he says a certain man had a fig tree that he had planted in his vineyard and there are so many things that is just so unorthodox about this parable certain things that is just so different about this parable for he says the man came looking for fruit on it but he did not find any so he said to the vineyard keeper for three years i've come looking for fruit on this fig tree and i've found none cut it down why does it even use up the ground depleting the nutrients from the soil blocking the sunlight but the vineyard keeper replied master one more year just give me another year with it allow me to dig around it apply probably some fertilizer and see if it will bear if after this year it still does not bear then cut it down and I believe this parable, you know, as the Bible puts it, was, was told during Jesus' last year of ministry. In his last year when he was being persecuted, it was referred to as this year as the year of controversy. Because during that time, the Jewish leaders were actively seeking to put an end to Jesus and his righteousness. And even though our Heavenly Father, even though he knew this, that still did not stop him 
from fulfilling his purpose shall we bless the lord you know many of us if we are if you are to get any insight information that someone is plotting to kill us if we are if we if we should be knowledgeable that if we go outside that door today someone is out there waiting on us then maybe we will never leave this building today but even though god himself knew that persons were out there plotting against him that still did not water him down instead he pushed even harder because he knew that his purpose must be fulfilled shall we bless the lord yeah. hallelujah shall we bless the lord yeah. and i believe brothers and sisters that we as human beings that have been placed here on this earth to fulfill a purpose i believe god has every right and every expectation for us to be fruitful amen i believe god has every right to expect us to fulfill our purpose why do i say this this is because firstly has gifted us with great care amen just as the parable outlined that the vineyard keeper placed the tree he had given it much care he planted the tree in a place of choice a vineyard and if you know anything about a vineyard brothers and sisters you know that a vineyard is some place that is, is normally used to, to grow grapes something of value you know something that much attention would be given to a, vine, a, a, a fig tree is somewhat of a bigger tree that is never normally suitable for a vineyard but for this man to place a fig tree in his vineyard that means he's giving it the best care possible it's not just any other tree that is left out there dependent on the weather dependent on rain to fall he placed it in a place where he was certain that he would give it all the attention that it needed so it had no excuse to not produce amen shall we bless the lord it was placed in a choice land obviously it could have it should have been profitable amen but instead the tree chose not to bear a delicate place of land a land with resources shall we bless the lord you know many times god chose to put us in situations that we ourselves would not have wanted but i believe god is telling us this morning that wherever i have planted you you should be fruitful you know many times god placed us in workplace god placed us with company some of the times that we ourselves that that we would not have wanted you know many times i hear persons testify about being sick and going to an hospital and the purpose of that many times is just to minister to that one soul no no one will choose to be sick but god will place you at places just so you can come in contact with someone we serve a god who is very purposeful everything he does there is a bigger plan behind it if only we would trust him then we serve a god who promises to always see us through shall we bless the lord hallelujah hallelujah and the bible says brothers and sisters he watched over the fig tree for three years after giving it every opportunity he plowed the land the tree was watered top class treatment you know just consider how good god has been to us amen just consider how many opportunities god has given us in fact life itself comes from him you know we all have been through bad times but the good times far outnumber the bad and even the bad times he has brought us through them so we ourselves as we have no excuse he died for us so that we might enjoy life with him hallelujah so we really can cannot blame him from expecting us to be ambassadors for him hallelujah the bible declares in first peter 2 verse 9 that we are God's chosen generation. We are a royal priesthood, a peculiar people. We are expected to live a certain class or standard. We know, brothers and sisters, the Bible declares, I think it is in 1 John, that we are sons of God. Hallelujah. And it says, let me find it. In 1 John 3, it says, Beloved, now we are the sons of God, and it shall 
and it doeth not yet appear what we shall be but we know that when he shall appear we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is you know brothers and sisters when you uh, when you realize the scripture then you will realize your true value you know when you realize what son really is then you know the power that you have inside you know when when, when a son speak brothers and sisters you know he speaks with the authority of the father if you know that God is your father and you have the authority of him then no longer will we settle to living below the standard but we live to a standard where our father will be proud of us shall we bless the Lord Amen. hallelujah Amen. hallelujah when you make a great investment you expect great returns and God has invested everything in us he has invested his life in us so he expects us to fulfill our purpose. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He provides us with these blessings. But he expects something in return. The farmer had every right to expect fig from his tree. Because he had cared for it. Because that is his function. The nature of the tree is to produce. Amen. When I look at Romans 7 verse 4, it tells us that God has a right to expect food from his people. Amen. And he went as far to tell us what exactly that he expects. When you look at Galatians 5, he tells us that he expects fruit. 5 verse 9, he expects goodness and righteousness. When you look at St. John 15 verse 8 and Philippians 1 verse 11, he tells us that when we are fruitful trees when we are we as people are fruitful trees then we glorify him he says that when we are fruitful he finds us to be excellent you know i don't know about you but i want to be excellent for god you know i want when i march into heaven on that day i don't want to be here to, to hear that brother ian's that was a good job or, or a very good job when excellent when other persons are hearing that that they were excellent i want to hear too that i am excellent and the bible says that when we produce fruits for god he finds us to be excellent shall we bless the lord shall we bless the lord but i want to ask you brothers and sisters if you invest a great deal in something but it is not producing as you expect how would that make you feel? I would be disappointed. And I pray this morning that our Heavenly Father, that He does not, that He doesn't become disappointed in us. The farmer was disappointed with this tree. It's tree that He has put so much effort in. Presumably had done all that He could. The tree was to be blamed. You know, normally, tree, as I said before, they have no control over their care. You know, when you look in a forest, nobody go out there to water a tree. A tree is just out there and, you know, when the rainfall get all the nutrients from the soil. But this tree was in a perfect spot. Perfect spot. It's not at the mercy of the weather. It is being provided for. You know, and knowing that God has blessed us in every way, we have no excuse for our fruitlessness we all remember how it you know it bothers us when we disappoint our parents you know i remember when i did gsat you know i was having my fingers crossed that i would pass for a good school because if, if i didn't pass for a good school then i would be ashamed but my parents i wanted so much to make my parents proud how much so how much worse is it to disappoint our heavenly father you know sometimes i wonder brothers and sisters you know, if you realize how real powerful we are, we are so powerful because we as men and women, we have the ability to disappoint the Heavenly Father. Do you see how much power this is? The Heavenly Father who creates heaven and earth, we have the ability to disappoint Him. You know, when we do not fulfill our purpose, when we do not live according to expectation, when we do not fulfill the purpose that he placed us here to fulfill then truly we disappoint him 
But the sad part about it is that it does not end that disappointment. If it just ended that disappointment, it would be bad. But after disappointment comes anger. Can I tell you that disappointment is just the tip of the spear, but the remaining of the spear is anger. We can almost hear it in the farmer's voice. Cut it down. Cut down that tree. It has been there for three years. It's wasting my resources. Now we should make space for something that is more profitable. Let us make space for something that will produce, that will fulfill its purpose. Its time has come. Cut it down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God has given us years upon years. Years upon years expecting us to get the job done. Please, I'm begging you, do not fail him. Do not fail him. Do not fail him. Can I tell you, brothers and sisters, if you're not being profitable, if you're not being fruitful, and if you are investing in something that is not producing, would you continue? I believe that it would have been a sensible move for that farmer to cut that tree down. I don't know who would agree with me. Use it for lumber. Many would think that it would be best if this tree is used for lumber. You know, because it's pointless to have a big tree in my garden taking up space and not producing. Even if, in, even in Genesis, the Bible tells us that even the plants, they must produce seeds. It's just a part of God's plan. Hallelujah. I want to tell you today, brothers and sisters, this might be your very last chance. But the point of the, 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 of the parable that I love is when even after the vineyard owner says, cut it down, there was the vineyard keeper saying, Master, just give it one more year. And that is Jesus in our corner. You know, Jesus is just right there. Even after we fail him time upon time, Time over and time over again is there giving us time to redeem ourselves. Giving us time to find our niche. Giving us time to just fulfill our purpose. How are you going to use this time? How are you going to use this time that Jesus is in our corner interceding for us? Interceding for. How are you going to use this time? I want to tell you that whenever Jesus decides to stop interceding then it will be time too late brothers and sisters this might very well be your last opportunity this might very well be your very last chance to find your purpose because the Bible tells us that our whole purpose, our whole duty is, I think is in Ecclesiastics is to serve God Amen? So today I pray that you will begin to live in your purpose. To walk as a son of God. To see God. To see yourself for who God sees us as. For he has embedded great power in us. When you see yourself as a son of God. No longer will you think as a slave. You know you will think that you will operate as a son. In the capacity as a son. And you will live as though the master prepared us to live. God bless you all. Jesus name the Lord is here let us stand giving us his word that he's expecting fruit fruit he's expecting us to reproduce he's expecting us to bear the fruit that we produce will cause us a place with him. If we do not produce, he has no place for us. No place. No place. No place. Today might be your last chance. I'm saying to you, 
in the hearts of God's prophets, his preachers, his true preachers, there's a feeling like it's just about over. But the door is not yet slammed. You can come in. You can come in. You still can do something if you are not bearing to produce. You're here today. Inside of your heart you feel empty. Empty. You might have tried. But there's still a thirst, a longing, an emptiness. You need your maker. You need him on the inside. The only time you can produce is when he is on the inside. You will bring forth what is on your inside. Would you come and surrender to him today? Come and surrender to him today. Tell him, Lord, I'm hungry, I'm thirsty. Let him forgive you of your sins. You can get baptized in his name and get his spirit on the inside. So you will be able to produce fruit. Hallelujah. Won't you come? God bless you, God bless you. I'll again and again. God bless you. God bless you. You've been so much to me, dear Lord. I'll do it again.
going to close off in prayer this time our father in heaven we honor you this morning we praise you and give you glory for your goodness towards us your continued goodness towards us your mercies and your compassion thank you for speaking to us in so many ways so many different ways God we love you God, we realize that the end is coming upon us and you are reminding us, oh God, that we must be ready. So we pray this moment, Lord, that as we are coming to the close of another service, when we leave this morning, we will not go for the rest of the week. Forget about what you told us today. But God, we will continue to play it over in our minds. Have your way, Lord, because God, you are the potter and we are the clay. Continue to mold us. Continue to make us, Lord, into what you want us to be. Because if we are not molded and made into what you want us to be, when the rapture comes,